my lords and gentlemen, pray silence for your chairman, the Earl of Wigger. KC, MG, MA, MD, FRCP, FRCS. Now, gentlemen, we are met here today uh, to discuss the strange case of Jeremy Dilk, the man with the shifting heart. <coughs> yes, yes. It is of general opinion that the man, Jeremy Dilk, <coughs> is a pronounced typical brachycephalic. No, 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 no. I, I, I regret that I am unable to agree with your opinion, Sir Mitchell Heron, uh, uh, Cooper Cooper. Hooper Cooper. Uh, of course. Uh, Hooper Hooper. Uh, of course, uh, Sir, Sir Mitchell, I am only a general practitioner. Oh, you need not apologize for that, Dr. Uh, thank you, Sir Mitchell Heron, uh, Ho Ho Hooper Cooper. I uh, only wanted to say that as I have been Jeremy Dilk's family doctor for many years. I suggest that the good Dr. Gravy runs over the facts oh, once more. Uh, you mean uh, Dr. Graves, not Gravy. Graves, not Gravy. Uh, quite, uh, precisely. Graves. Uh, uh, gentlemen, I suggest that uh, Dr. Graves gives us the whole story of Jeremy Dilk uh, from the beginning. My Lord Chairman, my Lords, gentlemen, as our noble Chairman has informed you, Jeremy Dilk is a comparatively ordinary man. He is, in fact, a partner in the firm of Tarkington and Dilk, brokers in the city of London. He may lack dash and enterprise, but uh, nevertheless he makes money. For whether stocks rise or fall, he makes his commission just the same. His partner, Mr. Tarkington, is a very go-ahead, modern, self-confident, up-to-date sort of man. A man entirely lacking in consideration for others. In fact, yes, just yes, this is Mr. Tarkington. Sort of no, no, definitely not. My dear sir, in reply to yours of the 14th. Oh. Yes, sir? Now tell Mr. Dilk I've time to see him now. Miss Blake, bring me the volume containing E and F, would you please? Now we need a seven letter word meaning elongated fish. And it isn't eel, and it isn't whale, and it could be herring, it could be herring. I wonder if we have the right meaning for elongated. Mr. Tarkington will see you now, sir. Oh, thank you. You tell him I'll be right in, would you please? Dear me, oh dear me, Miss Blake, I do wish I had asked you to make out a report on those nitrate mines. Yes, you asked me to do that a week ago. Did I really? Yes, and I did it a week ago. Did you really? Yes, that's right, thank you. Goodbye. Now, Mrs. Smith, 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 Jones, and Jones. That's three Smiths and two Jones. I am going to handle this nitrate deal entirely by myself. His Highness, the bogus of Bokhara, the owner of the mines. He's arriving in London tomorrow. I am going to meet him at the train. I am going to escort him to his hotel. And Mr. Tarkington will complete the deal as usual. As usual. Uh, nothing of the kind. Mr. Tarkington is going to have nothing to do with it. This is my own pet little proposition. I know everything there is to be known on the matter. I've put a great deal of study. I have all the papers. And, oh dear, what are those? Oh dear, those are letters that Mrs. Tarkington gave me to post as I passed her house this morning. What, again? Yes, yeah. Dear me, I, well, I'll give them to Mr. Tarkington. I don't think that was her idea, if you know what I mean. Yes. No. No, I don't know what you mean. 